Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Flying Dutchman. My name is Frederik Berbe and today I wanted to make a video about one of the most interesting artists alive right now, in my opinion, and that's Vincent Gallo. Some of you may know him from his cult classic movie uh, Buffalo 66, um, but that's only the tip of the iceberg, he's done so much more and I promise you that if you watch this whole video you maybe find him as interesting as me. Because it's, wow, every, every time I learn something new about him, I'm like, what? He did that? It's, I think it's crazy and I wanted to make a video about it because I, I, I haven't seen that many videos about him on YouTube and I think that's a shame because he should be more recognized and um, celebrated for what he has done for every industry. Um, a little disclaimer. All the information I've gathered, I've got from interviews and uh, articles online. So some of it may be not true, I don't know. And if you find something I say that isn't true, please tell me, send me a message and I'll try to uh, correct it. Okay, so let's start. Let's start. Who's Vincent Gallo? He was born in 1961 in Buffalo, a place in America somewhere, and apparently he didn't like it that much. Bad. Where'd you grow up? In Buffalo. There you go. The whole well, city. Bingo. The whole city yes. and, and, uh, is bad. Yeah. Oh, by the way, because they're the kind of, can I say asshole? Can you say asshole? You used to be able to say that. A-hole, yes. They're the kind of a-holes in Buffalo. By the way, they hate their own. They, there's no homecoming there. They Nobody. But for, for as far... But for as far as I know, he had an amazing childhood. He played in all these garage bands. And I think he also started being a little bit creative and he started He started playing in New York. He started playing in bands in New York. For example, a, an avant-garde noise band with Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yeah, you, you heard that right, the Jean-Michel Basquiat, the most, one of the most famous artist who have ever lived. He was in a noise band with him. And if you don't know uh, noise music, it sounds something like this. Or at least that's how I know noise music. They could have done something really different, but that's what I interpreted from noise music. So I think that's already really cool. Now in the 1980s, he also started painting. Um, but really, I think more on a professional level, he started making really nice paintings and putting his name out there. But he decided that he wouldn't get famous from it or he wouldn't get that much money out of it. So he started making short movies and he started acting because some people uh, from New York that saw him doing performances and uh, doing music uh, started asking, started, they started asking him to play in some of their movies. So that's how he became an actor, but he also started directing his little short movies, uh, like I said. During that time, he also was a model for, I think, Calvin Klein, and currently he's still modeling for brands like Yves Saint Laurent, as far as I know, yeah. And then, in 1998, he made his first real big uh, picture, and it's called Buffalo 66, like I mentioned mentioned before. And this, where, this is where it gets really interesting, because this movie, he wrote himself, he directed himself, he acted in the movie as the main character, and he made all the music for the movie. And he edited the movie as well. And boy, you, you have to have so much time and so much energy to just do something like that, and I think... It's amazing and it paid off because the movie is, I think, one of the best independent movies from America around that date, really. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing movie and it has, uh, it has the style. There, there's something real iconic I remember about the movie and that are the red boots, which are really cool. And there's like this one photo boot scene that everyone remembers when they've seen the movie because it's very, it's very iconic as well. All right. All right. Look like you love me. Let's span time, okay? Let's span time together.
<clears throat> the music from this movie, Buffalo 66, is also featured in the album Music for a Film, which is a really nice album. And later on, he also released his own solo project, his own solo music project, and that's called When. And it features some very nice songs, like I wrote the song for Paris Hilton, which was actually written for the real Paris Hilton, because I think he... Yeah, you knew her in person and they had a little affair, or a little sexy time. I don't know. Uh, but no, some great music on that album. And it shows again that he's just a man of all trades. And then, in 2004, he made another movie. And it's probably even more known than Buffalo 66, but in a bad way. And that's a, that's a real shame, because um, me as well, or I as well, um, postponed watching the movie for so long because it got so much criticism and so much bad reviews that I just wouldn't watch it. I didn't want to watch it because I thought it would ruin my perception of the artist and I wouldn't think of him as a great uh, director anymore. But I was so wrong, I was so wrong because a few days ago I finally decided to watch The Brown Bunny and I watched it, I thought it was amazing, I thought it was great and just kept thinking why does it get so much hate. Now I think about it, obviously it's pretty clear, because the movie is, in some ways, very slow. This is the intention of the movie, it's a very slow movie, it's a road movie, and there are a lot of scenes where he is just driving. Sometimes with a little, little bit of music in the background, sometimes with definitely, with totally no music in the background, background and you just see... Uh, from out of his dirty window while he's driving. These are, this is like I think 40% of the movie. The snow joke. But it's totally great because it captures this uh, contemplative mood of the character we're shown in the movie and it works fine. And no, it isn't too slow or too boring as some of you people have called it. And there is another really big criticism of the movie, and that's um, that's of course the oral sex that's um, that's shown in the movie. And um, I actually didn't want to spoil this, but look up one article of the Brown Bunny, and they're talking about the oral sex scene that you are shown in the last ten minutes of the movie, and it got a lot of backlash, a lot of hate because people thought it was too. Um, I think too in your face, too much porn-esque, porn-like uh, and it shouldn't be shown in independent movies at come. This film is controversial because there's oh, a real sex. There's yeah. an actress in there named Chloe Sevigny. She's hot. Sevigny. Sevigny. She's a piece of ass. That chick. She's pretty. Yeah. How's her oral technique? Was it good? This is a clip. Did of she her. get an Academy <laughs> Award? <laughs> this is from Brown Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Brown Ducky. <laughs> That's a great thing about movies. You could get a hot actress to give you oral. No, you. No, I really think. I understand some of the criticism, of course. You imagine going to the cinema and watching a movie and the last 10 minutes just... It's... It changes into porn. But it drives the story, it's important for the story, it's... It's like this very intense moment and it's followed by another few intense moments and I think it's really necessary for the story to progress so I don't have critique on this and I just think that people at that time weren't ready for the movie okay and it's only like 16 years ago maybe now it would have gotten much better criticism than in that time 
But I don't know, I really don't think it deserves so much hate and I think it's an amazing new movie. Maybe even better than Buffalo 66 because it's very... Uh, it really gets to you. And you... I promise you that even the people that watched it at Cannes in 2004 still think about the movie and that's what makes a movie great. You keep thinking about it and you keep contemplating about the stuff you, you have been shown. And apparently the French love the movie. <laughs> I read this in an article, I'll um, put it down uh, in a description somewhere. But the people in America hated it and the people in France loved it. And I completely understand why, because during the movie I had to think about of some movies from Claire Denis and Gaspar Noé who are known to provoke and make this very um, intense, also a bit slow, movies. And maybe they even took inspiration for, from him or he took inspiration from, from them. But that's to say that the French love this movie. And if we, if, we know, if we know one thing about French people, it's that their cinema is great. They have amazing cinema. Some of the best movies were made in France. So I think um, some of those people that gave uh, The Brown Bunny a bad review in 2004 need to uh, rethink their scores they give back then. They have given back then. But no, I also understand that the movie that was shown at Cannes wasn't the movie we have today because it was edited a bit more by Vincent Gallo afterwards. And yeah, also for The Brown Bunny, Vincent Gallo directed it, he acted in the movie and he edited it. But for this time he didn't uh, make the music. <laughs> and one thing I will never forgive, I really don't understand, is why he cut out the movie from Jean Frusciante. He is one of my favorite artists, uh, guitar artist, um, and he was set to make the music for the Brown Bunny, and eventually this music was cut out. So I do think that's a shame. I, I really don't understand why he did that, but but that's just a uh, nitty picky thing, I guess. <laughs> I forgot to mention this, but Vincent Gallo was also a professional a motorcycle rider. Yeah, on a professional level. Crazy. And the shots you see of him in the movie riding a bike is, they are actually him riding the bike. And if you still watch the movie, The Brown Bunny, and you think it's boring and nothing happens, I... Fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. And guys, there's still so much I haven't told you about him. For example, he also apparently has one of the biggest vinyl uh, of or LP collections in America. 35,000, I thought I heard. 35,000 uh, vinyls. He also has one of the best uh, uh, hi-fi uh, music installations, the most refined music installations installation in America which I think is also very interesting. He has his own website where he sells a lot of stuff on some normal stuff like DVDs, posters, a nice t-shirt and his cum, only his cum, yes he sells his sperm online on his website for only one million dollars I think, one million dollars and if you look at the fine print you could have a natural insemination for only five hundred thousand dollars more only five hundred dollars and then from the brown bunny it all went a little bit downhill for him I think or at least in the film industry and I think that's a damn shame because he could have made so much more amazing movies but of course of course you don't want to make movies again when your movie gets called the the worst film shown at Cannes and stuff like that. I wouldn't be um, sure about myself either. And 
I also think it's hard to work in the film industry when you say things like this. No, no. Leonardo's, Leonardo's a real movie star. No, it's you like, said Leonardo's the best looking girl you've ever seen. <laughs> didn't you? And this. Quentin Tarantino is an a-hole, you say. <laughs> oh, he's just a, a real... He's a jerk? Jerk. Man. You've he's hung jerk. out with him? No, he, I met, he stopped once. He was nice. He pulled in front of my house. But he's a collage artist. I mean, he's a, uh, you know... He's not a real director. You know, I... Too much weed? I, I didn't say it, right? Uh, you made yeah. a... Most of them are obviously jokes. Because he's... He's a quite a funny guy, obviously, joking a lot of the time. But people don't understand. You have to understand that he's joking. But... Yeah. No. It's a shame that this film somehow killed his career while it is in fact an amazing movie that I think everybody should see and form their opinion on. And obviously, obviously not everyone will like it, no. Most of you maybe, most of you will maybe not even like it at all. But for those that will like it, you'll, you'll probably like it very much. And I think you guys should give it a shot. And I truly believe that Vincent Gallo is one of the most misunderstood artists alive right now. And um, he's still alive, so maybe, maybe he'll get back on the saddle soon. Maybe make some more stuff. I hope so, at least. Uh, and I hope you guys find, found this video entertaining and you've learned some things about him. Yeah. See you around.